three points against the 49ers. Week 17, they beat Miami 56-19. We had the break dancers out. Uh, then they rested week 18, they lost. Uh, then they beat the Texans 34-10. to Then against the Chiefs, could only muster a measly 10 points. Brew, do you expect the Chiefs' defense to shut down your Ravens? I, do, I mean, those numbers, and obviously we knew that as we talked about it last year, but you think of those numbers they put up on these teams. And they put up, what, 38 on Detroit? I think, and I know their defense wasn't great, but 38 to 6, they beat them. That's a credit to the Chiefs. Um, no, I don't think they'll shut them down this year. I'm not saying they're going to score 35 points, Baltimore, but Derrick Henry, I think, is huge. And I think the Ravens are committed to the run. And they're oh, still going to throw the ball. I know they're committed to the run. Yeah. And Lamar, he, we all know he stated it now. He lost the weight so he can run. Yeah, can and we, so you have to worry about Lamar. You have to worry about Henry. I think Zay Flowers, I assume he's improved. Mark Andrews like Flowers, and Isaiah likely still there. Like, I think they'll be able to throw the football. I just think they – and they just went haywire last well, year. Well, they went, they went they Ravens were. in the playoffs. They scored the fewest points they score in any game all year. They didn't lead for any moment of the game like they have for every single year since Lamar's been there in the playoffs. And we can act like it's so odd that it happened. I would act like it's inevitable until it doesn't happen. That, to me, is old, it's somewhat old news. I, I don't think the Ravens will be shut down today, by the way. The Ravens in the regular season with Lamar are awesome. And while he struggles against the Chiefs, they also have, I think, scored 30 twice in their four regular season matchups, so that, that's not the concern. The concern to me is this quote, Coach, that I want to read to you. That came, Kent Babb did a long form piece in the Washington mm -hmm. Post on Lamar. How I'm feeling right now, I wish I was feeling like this, body-wise, the AFC Championship. That's fine. We would have won the game. Okay, maybe. Uh, I would have been able to move around for my guy, sure. With me hurting, and just hurting and can't move. I know if my legs were good, we would have won that bleep. And now this part. We wouldn't have even had to throw the ball. F throwing the ball. Coach. Sign me up. <laughs> All right, but we here. Found, <laughs> I love it. We found the winning formula. All right, but hold, let me just ask okay. you. If that's the case, then should John Harbaugh call Jim and be like, hey, can we have Greg Roman back? Should they, instead of piling every year seemingly first-round picks into wide receivers, draft more offensive line? Like, if that, that seems, it felt to me like last year it was Todd Munkin, Zay Flowers, bringing in OBJ for whatever that's worth. We're going to throw, and we're going to throw. And now Lamar, a franchise quarterback, two-time MVP, is saying, F throwing the football, which is a wild quote for a quarterback to give. Yeah, I, I don't believe that that quote is sincere. Oh. And and I, I when you get rid of Greg Roman, you move <clears> to Todd Munkin, and you're, everything that they talk about is how his completion percentage was the best of his career, how his yards was his, the best of his career. It's all about the passing game, and we got to get him better receiver, all these things. John Harbaugh said, I want him to be the greatest quarterback in the history yeah, of the NFL. The, well, there's like that component, too, and then you go get Derrick Henry, so now – you go get a bell coward running back. Your quarterback loses a bunch of weight, which doesn't indicate that he's looking to run the ball 20 times, 15 times a game. If anything, he's looking to move around maybe in the pocket, he's like that type of thing. Scramble. And, and you get a coordinator. Greg Roman was, was run-centric, tons of quarterback runs, really creative, really good at it. So there's a lot of moves that are counter to what, to what Lamar is saying. Now, Lamar in the big moments – should should follow this quote right here. But in the big moments, otherwise, if it's every single game, he's not going to be around long enough to ever see, you know, a long-term career. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I get where you're coming from, Nick, but obviously that, that quote is not to be taken literally. I mean, I think that's frustration. Like I said, to me it sounds like an off-the-record quote, but it's just he clearly is going to throw the football. I just think now he's of the mindset where I'm not trying to prove everybody wrong anymore and be a pocket passer, show I can win with my arm. I just want to win however it is. And if it's me breaking a 55-yarder, so be it. If it's me throwing the football, so be it. I, I, you, you don't think that's how – I think, think – You think that he changed last year or you think that organizationally they were trying to make him change last year? 
I think it was probably mutual. Like, I do think Lamar was trying to show that he can be more of a pocket passer. Like, I thought in that game against the Chiefs, he he did that. Yeah. I, like, there I, were times he could have run – I felt you know, like they, they, they've been very uh, upset about the criticism of Lamar as a passer, and it's been this this determination to prove every, everybody wrong. And Lamar has improved as a passer, but what makes him so unique is the right. combination of skills and, and should lean into that and, and, and continue to improve as a passer, but lean into it. Don't go the other direction and say, okay, right. this is what he's going to be because we say that's what he's going to be. I, it doesn't work. So well, before I give my take, you, Kevin Wiles, yeah. did a whole, I don't know, it was this week or last week, Lamar bulletin board. Yeah, about I Lamar it disrespect. It's so no, it's Lamar it, disrespect. It, it, yeah, no, where? that's fine. I'm not it's asking you to bring right? it out. No, but I also, I, I feel like. There have been a few times this show when we've been talking about Lamar where I've seen the little twinkle in your eye, but then we've moved on. Like, the the tenor of the discussion surrounding Lamar, that my vitriol at that quote, which I think is an absurd quote. What, listen, Lamar's a grown man sitting with a reporter from the Washington Post, and Kent Babb is not printing something that's off the record. Yeah. Lamar said it. No, I, don't, and I, I, I believe he the, said it. Right, yeah. Lamar said it, and that is a quote that, again, I do think there is sometimes a bit of a Lamar media double standard. If Daniel Jones says that, we are all laughing and killing him, and there's not another quarterback in the league that we could fathom saying it. And that is, and people, I think, don't like to say that because we all individually like Lamar, and this profile explains why. Yes, yeah, right. you know, The profile, him being like, I don't trust anyone but my mom, she's going to run things, all the people who have doubted that he could even be a quarterback, all that stuff. It shows why he's so likable. But I think the football criticism's fair. I know you feel like he is consistently disrespected. I, th I thought this quote was less about the overall nature of how he wants to play the game and more, um, Dusty, I don't know if we have the graphic of, like, the Chiefs weren't great at stopping the run. 18. And we didn't, have to, we didn't have to throw the ball, but we decided to throw the ball way too much and be way out of whack. The qu so he didn't need to throw the ball. The question that I would have for you, Coach, is do you think now that if, the, if we're on the record that we've all seen the Ravens respond to media criticism? Oh, you're going to criticize Lamar. Now Lamar is going to throw the ball. Well, now the criticism has gone the other way. You didn't run the ball enough. And if you're saying that the Chiefs are going to line up and be like, hey, we're going to basically run it back or with our same game plan and make we're it We're going to dare you to throw. Do you think the Chiefs are like, no, excuse me, the Ravens are like, no, this is Ravens football. We are going to run, run, run. Well, when you go get a guy like Derrick Henry, <laughs> it's, it, it indicates that you're, you're looking to run first and then build off of that. And, and the unique thing is with Derrick Henry and Lamar, you can threaten in the running game so many different places. And, and you have a 300-pound pullback. A lot of the things lean into it's going to be run, run, run. And with a young or an a, uh, not young, but a new offensive line, you need to protect those guys early because they've got to get some continuity and running the ball does protect them. Okay. For just like rep, you want just reps of them being aggressive rather than the offensive pass protecting? Line. Yeah. Well, if, if you establish the run first, then the defensive line can't just tee off and, and go. So they've got to play run first, then they react to the pass. And it gives the quarterback more time. I'm telling you, this is Derrick now, Henry I, over bet. I could see the first play of the game being hard sell play action of Derrick Henry throw a shot. What? Tomorrow. Yeah. What? Probably tomorrow. You think it's happening tomorrow? Probably. Did you see Jeremy Fowler? Jerry today? will cave. <laughs> what, what's is the point to be exactly right or is the point to be interesting? You well, tell me. Oh, oh, it's well, interesting. <laughs> if Jerry doesn't want to do it, that's his prerogative. He should have done it, and it would have been the most he interesting and the right thing to do, and would have lined up right. It's the right prediction. Bro, do you want to? It was the right prediction. It it's like you play blackjack. I made the right call. The cards landed no. the wrong way. No, that's yes, not that's at how all what happened. happened. Yes, you have to play that, the percentages. You do have right to play point the percentages. Wild. Exactly right. But you, you were like, oh, I went out. Was it a bad beat? Like, no, I made the right call. But yeah. next thing you know, I'm packing up my stuff. I'm saying, Danielle, we got to go. I lasted for four hours in the Bahamas. Yeah. That's what happens sometimes. Uh, I saw him at a poker tournament I played in the Bahamas months ago. It's one of the worst moments of my yeah. life. I but you made the right call. I actually, I did, but that is not the exactly. situation. Exactly. That's you made not the what's right happening call, here. And it just broke the wrong way. That's but you were right. Right. But and so am I. <laughs> I still have faith. Right? <laughs> I, I Tomorrow. All right, I'm putting Justin Tucker on the bud list.
here's what happened last year. Basically, you got your lunch stolen from you, and Travis Kelsey uh, played bodyguard to Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes kicks your stuff. So you want to be a kicker? I'll kick your stuff right here. <laughs> Travis Kelsey said, you better move your helmet like Patrick asked you. And if you didn't, I'll move it for you. Takes his helmet, chucks it. Well, <laughs> Justin Tucker was asked about his uh, pregame routine in the rematch. This is uh, via uh, Carlita Parks. Take a listen. Do everything I can to prepare myself to be ready to contribute to the Ravens winning a football game. And that's all I gotta say about it. So you go about it the same way as last time? I will prepare.